Shrink wrapping is the very best way to protect a boat during a cold, snowy winter. But there's a lot of mystery surrounding just what shrink wrapping entails. So today, Boats.com is going to school with a shrink wrap expert. Hi, I'm Dustin from Atlantic Shrink Wrap. We're here today, we're gonna to shrink wrap this customer's boat out on a boat lift here in Edgewater, Maryland. Our company is based out of Annapolis, Maryland. We've been shrink wrapping for a little over 15 years now. Today we're gonna to show you some of the, the rights and wrongs about taking care of a boat because some of the tools that we use are very dangerous. And when you put those tools to somebody's boat, you better know what you're doing. So we had a lot of rain the last couple of days. We're gonna dry this boat off to make sure that any place that plastic's touching the boat, there's no moisture left. Like a good paint job, it's the prep work that's so important. Dustin and his assistant spend a solid hour just drying the boat, removing the bimini top, and preparing the straps that will eventually support the shrink wrap. This is where a line for shrink wrapping was put on and it, it creased the canvas. This is probably a few years old. It'll probably be the, the rest of the boat's age. Uh, we don't want to do that. We don't want to cause any damage to the boat. So as tricky as this one is, we're going to find a way to make sure that our cords do not contact on the canvas, or I'm sorry, the, the upholstery. So what we've done is we found a way to put our lines on the boat. We're going to start prepping the top of the boat, but we've avoided all of the upholstery. So these lines are not touching the upholstery. The plastic can touch it, but nothing will crease or damage the upholstery. Okay, the next step in the process is we're going to put two by four straight down our center line of the boat. Uh, we're going to have one back here in the cockpit, and we're going to have one in the bow. That, and they're uh, strategically placed so that it sheds the snow off of the large areas of the boat. Okay, so we've got both of our props in place now. Uh, they're tied off bow to stern and port to starboard. So they're going to be very sturdy. And once the shrink wrap's on it, the shrink wrap's actually going to help hold them in place. So this boat with these nice high peaks is going to shed the snow real nice. Uh, however, you know, we, we tell our customers anything over six inches of snow, if your boat is still holding the snow and it's got over six inches, you can come out with maybe a soft broom or something and tap on the shrink wrap. It'll help that, sh that snow get to, to moving and slide off. Okay, so what I found here inside the customer's boat is a Starbright No Damp Moisture Absorber and Dehumidifier. It's a great product. It works well. It doesn't have a very long life because of the moisture that gets inside of a boat every evening. The boat sweat. The one thing you must uh, make sure you're shrink wrapper does is ventilate the boat properly. That's going to be your best bet against uh, you know controlling moisture and controlling any kind of mildew or dampness. The boats will sweat every night even with vents but throughout the day the cross winds going in and out of the boat will dry it right back out. It takes another hour of tweaks and changes until Dustin is finally satisfied and begins to drape the plastic over the boat and prepare to actually shrink wrap. So what we're using today is called a shrink fast heat tool. Uh, it's a self-ignition, self-extinguished torch run off of a standard grill size propane tank. Um, the gun is used for doing a lot of the small work around the bottom, sealing the seams up. Uh, it's over, close to 300,000 BTUs and about 3,500 degrees at the tip. You can see I'm wearing some protective clothing, protective gloves, welding gloves, and a flame retardant sleeve. Also, I'm wearing a leather glove on my right hand so that I don't get any blowback from the, from the, the flame. plastic get away. There's a piece that got off. So we're gonna make sure we get it back. Like that. Another good environmental thing about the polyethylene is that it is 100% recyclable. What is not is the cord that we use to tie all this together. So when you're removing your uh, shrink wrap in the spring, look for a local marina that will recycle it and make sure you take the cord out of it. Okay, so there's the, the initial heat. Now we're gonna go back and reinforce some of the seams and we're going to put ventilation in it for the winter and this boat will be completed. Okay, so what we're installing now, it's called a stealth vent. They're self-piercing vents uh, that go into the shrink wrap. And the reason we like these vents is because they're kind of bird proof. Um, there's other ways, cheaper ways of doing it, but uh, from a professional standpoint, to protect the boat, to get air inside of it and no, no birds, that's the way we wanna do our jobs. Pierce it, slide it up in place, and because this is a 26 foot boat, we're going to have six vents, three on each side of the, the boat to allow cross ventilation. 
So all you folks across the nation looking for a shrink wrap company to take care of your boat, my one bit of advice would be to check their references. If they're a local company, they ought to have boats that they have already done that year. And you go out and look at them and, and look to, to see if they pay attention to details. That's one of the things we strive for is paying attention to detail and we want to treat every boat as if it's ours. Hopefully your shrink wrap experience will be a good one.